Rich Tarani with TMC here. Thanks for watching. We're at Interop 2013. I'm speaking with uh, Kevin from uh, Airwatch. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. So uh, tell us a little bit about what someone would see coming into your booth. What someone would see coming into our booth is a very large tablet behind us representing uh, what we're doing with enterprise mobility management and trying to simplify that for our enterprise users. So BYOD is just a massive, massive trend. Um, I think uh, Gartner just came out with uh, some research today saying that uh, very soon, or more than 50% of companies, I don't know the exact number, are going to force employees to, to, have, to bring their own device. So I mean, it just seems like, I mean, it went from almost a kind of this small trend to mandated by the company. So how is that affecting business? Uh, you know, certainly it's a huge business driver for us. And when we look at BYOD, we look at that as a part of an overall problem for enterprise mobility management, enterprise mobility security. It's one piece of everything else that a company has to deal with or the enterprise has to deal with when bringing mobility into the enterprise. And so um, it's driving business, it's absolutely great for us, but really it's a huge cost savings for our customers. If they can do it in a manner that's easy for the mobile user, secure for the enterprise, uh, and cost efficient, and that's what we help them do. So tell me a little bit about the security, some of the challenges that enterprises face. I think there are a number of challenges when you look at uh, mobility security. Number one is these are consumer devices that uh, primary intent is used um, at home or in a, a personal setting, not in the enterprise. So being able to apply enterprise grade security to that device, encryption, ensuring that the device is not compromised, not jailbroken, rooted, and so forth, um, those are all struggles that the enterprise has when adopting these types of technology. But what the enterprise loves about it is the productivity improvement, the collaboration, the applications that they can push down. And so it's a win-win it's a if you can lock that device down, uh, apply a rigorous set of compliancy rules, which is what AirWatch provides for our, our enterprise customers. Um, the ability to take that device now and make it look just like any other endpoint that you're going to use, whether it's a PC, laptop, tablet, uh, mobile device, what have you, and apply a very similar management framework to it. Um, our customers tell us that uh, complexity is oftentimes the enemy of security. So where we can now take a common process across any platform, any operating system, and apply application management or content management capabilities uh, and lock those down with common set of IT security policies, um, we enable our customers to be able to take this mobility in in a very safe way inside their enterprise and make their mobile users more productive. So uh, I've noticed a trend of some of the um, service and support companies offering entry level um, device management capabilities, uh, even telecom expense management companies. How do you differentiate? You know, I think there is a trend going on right now where when you look at just mobile device management, very limited functions of mobile device management are creeping into a number of other uh, solutions that you see in the space, and you nailed a couple of those. Access controllers, uh, network access controllers have uh, some small bits of MDM. Uh, telecom expense management have some small bits of MDM, but they really don't have a comprehensive enterprise mobility management strategy. And so where we differentiate is we provide that platform for mobile management and security to an enterprise that goes well above and beyond those very simple functions of wiping a device or, or potentially locking a device, uh, we go into a whole security layer that integrates uh, not only configuration management, uh, application management, content management, email management, but it does it all across with a, a compliancy engine and an analytics that runs on top of that. Um, so it's a very clear choice for our customers when they're looking at uh, a need to secure their devices uh, we differentiate it's kind of night and day. It, you know, the difference between, I guess, having a, a, a lighter and a, and a, a flashlight. <laughs> you know, very different use cases there. So I'll give you the last word on just uh, what's next. Uh, anything else we missed? Um, absolutely. You know, our, our company is going through uh, just rapid growth at the moment. We've been very well accepted by uh, the market. Um, we've just had our first round of outside funding, so uh, for the last six years we've operated and bootstrapped the company just uh, based on, uh, on uh, working in the industry, but we've just recently taken about $200 million in outside funding for our uh, A series of funding. We're using that to continue our growth and expansion, specifically on our mobile content management uh, application, Secure Content Locker. Um, but also for potentially building a war chest to, to look at the market. If we see uh, good acquisition opportunities, we'll certainly uh, evaluate those as they come.
So, and I should just mention, I, I told you uh, off camera that uh, I met your CEO about a year and a half ago or so at Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, and he told me about the, uh, the locker and how, uh, for example, if you have a board of directors and you want to send them some confidential information for their eyes only, it stays in the locker, it doesn't leave, so they can't forward it. You, you avoid leaks, you minimize leaks, right? That's Things right. like that. That's right. Actually, that use case is much more interesting because we've now taken that secure content and linked it to geofencing or time of day. Uh, so if, again, I'm a board, uh, a board member, um, I can look at those board documents either at my home office or at the corporate office, but when I leave uh, the geofence around the corporate office, those, that content comes right off the device. And we actually did that with all of our users at our uh, user event in Barcelona Mobile World Congress this past year. Um, in addition to that, when we look at time of day uh, policies for content, for configuration for profiles, if I'm a student going to school with my own device, uh, between the hours of eight and three o'clock, we can do things like lock down FaceTime or take away Game Center or distribute uh, e-learning books uh, with content. When that student leaves, um, for the content that's appropriate to stay on the device, we can leave it, but the content that's appropriate to the classroom, we can remove that from the device after three o'clock in the afternoon or after they leave the geofence around the school. So very exciting what's going on with a much more dynamic policy control uh, with time of day and geofencing on all these different things that we do on the device. I'm waiting for version 2.0, oh, the Mission Impossible version, <laughs> that after 15 seconds it self-destructs. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah, no, we, we try not to do that. We try not to do that. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.